My name is Amir Altamimi. I live in H. I live. In, I am from HP Sweden uh, and live in Sweden. I have the territory of Nordics, and HP defines them as the Baltic countries and the Scandinavian countries. So basically, today I'm going to talk about Haven, and that's the HP's bed on big data. Um, when I approached this presentation, I had to make. I, I was thinking on how could I kind of make it tangible because everybody talks about big data and everybody has their vision of big data. And what is big data anyway? It's the same as with the cloud. Everybody does cloud nowadays. Um, so I approach it from the perspective that, okay, I'm going to take the cases that I'm working on today and try to make them tangible for you. And maybe you can find something that you like and you can apply to yourself. Um, these cases that I'm talking about, uh, I'll just break it uh, when I go through the presentation and talk about the cases. Um, you can interrupt and ask questions about this. Uh, it's quite okay. Uh, I won't be able to name the customers all the time, but uh, I would absolutely talk about the technology if you want to deep dive into one of those. So, big data. Um, anybody has their own definition of big data? Anybody knows what that is? Anybody to care to guess? No, it's a big cr crowd, so I understand. Um, just before I start off, I was supposed to mention this slate. We have a draw at the end of the day, I think. Uh, and uh, the winner might get one of these. It's red, sexy color, I was told. So um, yeah, please, uh, please attend the draw. Um, so my big data for me, let's see what, why I think this can be big data. This is a proof of concept done with um, imaging data from 2006, recorded, old, old stuff. So how can this relate to big data? What's, 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 what's with big data here? Anybody understand what that was? It was a thermal image of a person running to a fence and walking back and running to a fence. So uh, one, uh, Atia in Sweden uh, hosts a lot of CCTV companies and their, their data outputs. So they provide the platform beneath um, for storing the images, right? Uh, and these images are just stored just in case that somebody from, a, from police or the security uh, company wants to look at data from, let's say, March the 3rd to March the 2nd between these and these times, set off by an alarm, for, for example. Uh, this is a quite manual task, um, and Ati approached us and said that, okay, if we could automate this, how about we, how about we can, uh, that we will alarm the customer instead if they break certain rules. Uh, we took this, we had the technology with this, and uh, we provide uh, Ati with the means, uh, just now in a proof of concept stage, to analyze these streams, and instead of, you know, the customer telling that we want to see a certain amount of time uh, between this and this period, we alert the customer and say that, hey, something has happened here that you need to watch. Um, this is my favorite part of the, um, and this is actual um, actual live live footage that was taken from the subway. And as you can understand, the, what what happened here that we determined that this white line. And there he goes. This white line is a, a boundary, and if you tread, you set, a, set off an alarm. And the alarm is set off and sent to the operator. And here he comes up again. Seems like a very tired guy. It should, if I remember correctly, also set up a second alarm because he's going back there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he dropped something. So it sets off an alarm. So big data, how can, how, why is this different as big data for me? Well, these streams are massive. They are taking about, I think that the Stockholm subway system is like 10,000 cameras feeding these streams. Uh, and you can't possibly have people monitoring all these feeds, right? So you have to have some way of automating 
watching the feed and, and, and deciding what to do and when to do it in an automated way. So this is a typical example of how you can use big data and how we provide a solution. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, that was one typical application of how to use big data, right? Uh, so big data is information, right? Um, every day we produce tons of information. And we have for, for this every 60 seconds, last year we produced 98,000 tweets, like 700,000 uh, status updates, instant messages, and so forth and so on. Um, the thing with this information is that this is not data mined. It's, it's pr information that you produce, um, it's not structured, and it's human information, right? Um, and we try to find ways to kind of data mine this and provide services for the customers. This is, this is kind of the, the essence of big data for, from our perspective. Um, as I told, 90% of this information that we produce is human and unstructured data. Um, and 10% is structured. So how do we define structured data? Well, if you have a uh, database or a, a logical structure within your company for, a, I don't know, a share, a public share or something, that's structured in a way that you put metadata saying that this guy or this department owns the data, he, uh, he or she can uh, do something with it and it should be deleted after five or six years or never deleted. That's kind of a structured way to do it. Then we have the unstructured data. Uh, that's basically my own um, you know, presentations, the stuff that I do, for example this presentation, uh, all my chat histories. Well, there's a lot, a lot of information that I have, but it's not structured, it's, it's not mineable from a corporate perspective. Um, uh, for example, if a customer if my boss says that I want to find everything about this case, I need to go and to my laptop, find the stuff that I have done with this customer, compile it in a folder, and give it to my boss. So that's typical something that I need to do manually to take my unstructured data and try to structure it for, the, for, the, uh, for my manager. So basically, 10% is database structured. That's in your enterprise. 90% of the data it's unstructured. I think that it would be the same for all customers. So, um, big data then. M uh, need to define human information and machine data. Machine data is something that is produced by machines, right? So you have typical logs, um, you have, for example, sensors, sensors that put out, um, you know, in a temp directory, all kinds of stuff that's happening or events. This is a vast amount of information. Um, and this is also data mineable. I'll, I'll show you some, some other use cases here. And then we have the human information. Now human information is the, the um, for example, the video feeds uh, that we put out. Also voice, for example. We usually, um, when you call a call center or you call a support, the, um, that voice, uh, your voice conversation is typically recorded um, and it's stored as a, you know, as a binary file of some sort. Um, what the system cannot understand is the sentiment or the words. It's just put there for you or for a, somebody to kind of see it, okay, if the customer is unhappy, what was there during that call? Um, a way to data mine this is to analyze the speech, try to find out the sentiments, is it angry customer? Uh, and what was said actually. So for example, if we are angry about a service, analyze the speech, uh, transform it from like speech to text, and find keywords. So that's typical human information. Now, um, our two main products in the Haven platform is the Vertica and Autonomy. Autonomy deals with the human information. So it kind of understands uh, faces, picture recognition, speech, um, sentiments. Uh, Vertica is typically very good with machine generated data. So everything that's log based and, and very um, uh, structured from a machine perspective, but there's no sentiment in the, uh, in the data that's put there, right? I 
and of course you have the name Hadoop. Hadoop is basically the platform that you can have uh, if you choose to have a, a kind of a container for all that data. Um, so what are the typical cases that we do? What do we see? Uh, what is this disruptive technology that we're talking about and how can we data mine it? Well, we have uh, Telia Sonera. Uh, are they also operating here? So in Sweden and Finland, uh, well, in Sweden anyway, where I live, they were a monopoly, a state monopoly, uh, not very liked. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty much people were angry with them, quite a lot. Uh, and they turned into a private company and they had to kind of improve the image. And the image was that if you call them, um, you had a lot of problems. They were rude in the support centers and stuff like that. So um, they came to us and said that, okay, how can we improve this? Uh, and we, and uh, we said, okay, how do you want to improve your image? It's kind of a, not a technical discussion, but more of a broader discussion. And said, okay, we need to improve our service uh, on the quality of the service and the feedback loop to the customer. Uh, because we cannot be cheapest, uh, there are always operators that are going to be cheaper, so we have to pr uh, improve the quality. So hence, um, we started to analyze the speech that, they, uh, that we collect, you know, when you call it support, and we find out the sentiments. So basically, when people are angry, what is the call about? So we kind of analyze the speech, and here is an angry customer. Okay, those, uh, those voice recordings, what's being said and what products are mentioned in the Telias and portfolio. So when we see a highlight in, in, um, uh, in an angry customer, take it and then you analyze the speech and then they say, for example, okay, it's regarding a um, TV across network or it's regarding a uh, billing system or whatever. Uh, point that down and direct that to the product owner of the, of the uh, offering. So we have a direct feedback loop directly from a support to the product owner. Uh, and now Telia Sonera in Sweden has the most um, um, satisfied customer in Sweden. So it took 18 months, but still this was a kind of a cool thing to see that, that a big former state monopoly that people really didn't like became the number one uh, satisfaction with the customer through a feedback mechanism by just analyzing the voices of the support calls and feeding back that to the product owner. So kind of a cool, cool thing to see. And we are seeing this happening. Um, now the colleagues um, in f other competitors uh, saw this happening in Sweden. So now, now they have approached us uh, in Finland and want to do the same. So, so pretty cool. That's also an, an, an application of big data. So big data, what is it in this case? Well, it's every call that's been put into the Teleasonera and saved. And we data mine that and find stuff, something to do with it, and produce a service of it. So that's one example of big data. Um, in this case, also Atia, uh, they host, um, they, they provide not only IT services, they provide kind of a voice solutions like, like uh, telephone conferencing equipment. Now we are trying to find ways to put this as an offering to customers, as a standard offering. So basically, if you do us a support center solution for a customer, maybe we want to offer this as an add-on, as a package. That, hey, do you want to have this analytics in place? You pay, you pay this amount of extra money and you get this feedback mechanism in your, in your product offering. So let's see what happens there. It's going to be interesting. Everybody follows? Good. Um, so I talked about te uh, well, telecom. Um, we have healthcare. Uh, also, we are TIA. Um, Europe has just uh, come out with these new rules that uh, if you have medical history um, and you want to, you kind of want to find out and data mine, uh, for example, all 11 years old between 86 and that was born 86 and something, some other place. You want to find all the fractures looking like this and this. You have to produce that material and show it within a, um, I don't know, it's a two weeks time frame. Uh, today, the medical archivings, uh, depending on what country, this country, they are very good. In Finland, they're very bad, for example. Sweden, quite okay. 
it takes a very long time for us to compile that information. So um, with our Haven platform, we plug in and we data mine the medical archives and produce the images and present that to the, to the guy that asks or the girl that asks. So typically this, done, this is done through uh, scientific uh, projects. Um, uh, finance fraud detection. Um, American Express is our, also a customer, not through Atia. It's a global account. Uh, however, I had this first chance to see uh, how it works. Basically, I was in Stockholm, then I went to uh, Madrid uh, within within the one day, and then American Express calls me that hey, you have been into two countries, but now we see a transaction happening in Japan. You wouldn't be in Japan, right? Um, no, I'm not. I'm in Madrid. Good. So they cancel that that transaction. So basically, it's an analytics looking at all the transactions being done through a, through one of your cards, and if you seem to switch places very fast, it has a me mechanism that triggers and says that, okay, this might be a problem. Actually call the customer and check what happens. So big data analytics through, through um, in real time through transactions, also an application. Um, and this is the field that's really growing the most for me, I think. Uh, and it's so easy to show. Um, basically, finding the information that you want from an enterprise. Um, I'm so awaiting that we, with HP, are going to use this ourselves. Um, if I want to have a document, it takes me incredibly amount of time to find this document to broken web pages, my search. I just can't find the stuff that I'm looking for. Uh, I did, the easiest thing was I, I, I wanted to find a tender, a public tender, kind of a template so I could cut and paste and use it for another customer. Um, and it had to be in the Swedish look and feel format. I know that every salesperson has done this and still I just couldn't find it. It took me like two hours to find this information. Finally, and it wasn't through the search of our corporate search. It was from a colleague that actually provided me with this, like like manually sending me an email. Uh, uh, Atia, in this case in Gothenburg, here the boy, um, they did a kind of a easy proof of concept. They go to the customer and say that okay, what is the typical search that you want to do, and please do it, and let's clock out how, how long time it, it takes for you to find this thing, uh, and obviously. It always takes too long, always takes too long. And then they say that, okay, if we provide this um, in this reasonable amount of time, is it worth money for you? Yes, it is. And let's, let's do proof of concept and prove that we can do this. So basically, we are running proof of concepts with enterprise search just by uh, tapping into the enterprises and indexing the datas and, and finding the stuff the way that you want to find it. Um, so, so what do I mean by that? Because when I search, I typically I typically put out keyword, but if the stuff is not indexed, I can't find it. Um, with Haven, it understands human sentiments, so it, I can I can write and talk to it as I, I would speak to a person. So basically, I can write, please find me tender with a Swedish template look and feel, and he will understand that and pick that for me. So not a key that this has, that's not a key search index. It's a human information in uh, searching. Quite cool. So typically the IT industry, I mean we are, I'm representing the IT industry, I address the 15%, right? That's typically the hardware, software, doing some kind of solution with a product portfolio. But when I talk about big data, I address actually something else. I actually, I talk to the business um, regardless of what infrastructure this or software licenses or whatever, I talk about, um, okay, so what was your problem? Well, in this case of enterprise search, I couldn't find my information in a timely manner. So here's the solution for that. Now that will drive hardware and software be below it, of course, but uh, it's, a, it's a whole other um, kind of conversation you have with the customer. Same goes with the, for example, the CCTV, you know, the, the recordings with the videos. I'm not talking about IT at all. I'm talking about the guy that owns you know, cameras, 
is, is, um, is uh, required by the law to keep this for a certain amount of time. And if the authorities ask that, uh, to have access to that data, he will provide for that. Now we offer a solution that helps the customer in a proactive way. So this, it's not an IT discussion at all. It's actually a, a kind of a business discussion, which is quite cool and uh, very unusual for me because I'm a hardware software guy, so I usually talk hardware software, but I really enjoy this conversation. So we're not just talking about the 15% anymore. We're actually handling 100%. Uh, and that's a cool conversation to have. And the same goes for the voice providing stuff. Um, it's not an IT discussion. We're actually talking about improving their services. So not that our server is faster or a license should be cheaper or anything like that. <coughs> so Haven, uh, that was the theme of this, um, this presentation. What is Haven? Well, we have a container if you choose to have. So that's a Hadoop. It's a massive parallel file system uh, that you can pour in your data if you choose to. However, you don't have to do that. You can actually process and index stuff where it is. So um, IDOL is, understands like it has 500 connectors, understanding 25 languages and so forth. So you can keep the data in place and plug in the connectors and build an index. So that index will be actually be hardware, of course, and the IDOL engine, but you don't have to move data. It, it indexes stuff. The drawback of this is that um, obviously the more advanced your search is, the more you want to know, the more resources it will plug from the uh, production, right? So if you want to have a um, non-intrusive environment, you actually should have Hadoop and take the data that you want to have analyzed and put it in there. Vertica, uh, extreme fast uh, analytics, typically against the, um, the um, machine produced data, log files, stuff like that, right? Uh, enterprise security, of course, uh, and then you can build the apps. That's the, the, uh, uh, the end of it and apps applications. Um, I actually touched this uh, a little bit uh, earlier um, with these case examples. But if we have the Haven component here, like our big data portfolio, um, well, we have help integrators, reseller, cloud. We provide the business intelligence, um, and we provide enterprise services. So uh, for example, so when I say, for example, cloud, how do I touch that? Well, uh, in the case of uh, the CCTV, the camera uh, application, uh, or the analytics of the big data uh, streams, video streams, uh, that is provided with a Cloud Agile platform. So basically, they offer uh, capacity per terabyte per a certain amount of IOPS and so forth. So this analytics of the video streams is also offered on top of that as a pay per use. So basically, you pay for whatever amount of data that you want to analyze. Uh, so that can be provided by a cloud platform. And Atia, of course, is a reseller, so they can also resell the solution, not just host it themselves. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Now, Idol. Idol, uh, when I talked about these solutions, everything that has in common with those is that there's an engine called Idol um, embedded into it. Now, Idol is a, uh, it's actually a statistical engine and looks for patterns and, and, um, and uh, are mathematical models and differentiates um, uh, deviations. So it's, it's basically a scientific project that was productified. It's an engine. So uh, there is no, you cannot buy Idol as a product, it's more of a end, you know, engine in a solution. So for all applications that we have, it probably has IDOL embedded on it, but then we have different applications with it. Uh, what makes it very interesting is that it uh, plugs into social media, video, audio, email, text, just about everything. Uh, it understands pretty much every application that there's out there. Um, and that means that when we do, for example, medical archiving and analyze that, there's, there is already plugins in place to just you know put the idol in the place, connect it to that to that medical archive, without drawing the content from the medical archive to anywhere else. You can analyze things in place, which is quite cool. Um, also, um, the human aspect of it. So as I told you before, 
um, it's kind of a machine learning system also. So if you have, uh, we have 25 languages, so you can actually talk to it, not talk, but type to it as you would interact with another human. It would understand that and give results back. The accuracy, depending, uh, when you start and deploy an idle solution with the human sentiments, uh, you have, uh, I think, 80% accuracy from the start, but then it will start to learn. And, and the more that you use it, the more it will adapt and kind of be more and more accurate. And the target for us is to reach 98%. So when we reach 98%, we can say that it's production full. So a deployment of an idle system would be like a two month trial period. And then after two months, we have a production wide system that we can use. Um, I think that we will um, put this presentation to you, to you, I'm not sure, but I think that we will do. So here's just the 500 idle functions, or a, a snap of it. And basically, if your business touches anything of these, there is a possibility for us to kind of put a big data solution in place. This doesn't actually mean that there's a, uh, let's say, a solution custom made from the beginning. It probably won't be, uh, because, uh, well, obviously you have to tailor the idle systems for your specific needs. Um, but for big applications like facial recognition, that's already in place. Um, if you have um, everything with voice, that's probably in place. We also have, uh, for example, this um, uh, picture analytics. So Interpol is one of our, I think it's a reference customer. So uh, if a police does a raid and finds art uh, that's, that's been stolen, um, the police can take a picture of that, send that to, the, uh, uh, to this uh, central repository, and it will automatically say that this is uh, highly probable that this is a fake. So just disregard it. But if there are a certain amount of matches, they will say that, hey, by the way, this is kind of interesting. This could be the real thing. Please take this material and process it. In, in the laboratory and, and make the compar uh, comparisons. So that's kind of a same stuff as facial recognition, but, but it's you know, on pictures, stuff like that. Uh, vertical. Um, have you ever heard about Vertica, by the way? Anyone? No? So Vertica, um, it's, as I told you, it is typically done analyzing machine-produced data. Uh, it's a column-based indexing system. So um, that means that it indexes stuff in a different way. Um, if you wonder how Facebook can be so fast, considering there's like, I don't know, billion users and still so many pictures, it has Vertica using it. Uh, and it indexes not as a standard SQL you know, searches when you do something. It has an, uh, a different way of, of indexing and produces material fast. But if you, if you would use Vertica as a, um, as a standard SQL um, database, it would be very, very terrible. It wouldn't do a very good job. But it's very good for producing stuff like, yeah, typically Facebook. Hadoop, um, I take it that everybody knows what Hadoop is, but I just just a brief, brief recap. Hadoop is kind of a, the, a repository where you can pour in the data that you want to have analyzed from a big data perspective. And pretty much anything that you pour into the Hadoop, uh, we can analyze. Um, So where do we use Haven uh, within our platforms? We have pretty many products, and we embed idle into pretty much everything uh, these days. So this is a snapshot for you to see also uh, when you get the material, uh, when you get the, the product, no, the presentation, sorry, to, to what we can do and not to do. Um, the thing that we see growing very much is actually the um, the uh, storage optimization if we go back to, to uh, kind of infrastructure discussions. So um, 
This uh, regulatory EU has said that everything needs to be archived for a certain amount of time if the data is, you know, kind of legal compliance and, and, and so forth. Um, and our public entities doesn't know what is supposed to be backed up and not. So what they do is that they back up everything. And they continue to back up everything. And then when you ask, okay, when are you deleting the stuff that you back up? Never. So basically the backup data is growing and growing and growing. And this becomes a big, big problem anyway in Sweden. Uh, so what we have provided now is that we analyze the data that's being backed up and say that, by the way, nobody has touched these files for a certain amount of time. You may want to take this data and migrate somewhere else. This data we know is very important because you have regulatory rules. Uh, so this you have underprotected. You, you should put this data into this place and so forth. So we provide them a mechanism of analyzing and you know, kind of suggesting to the customer what they need to do with the data that, they, that is being backed up. So this is going quite well. So basically storage optimization. That's one, one trend happening. Uh, last, uh, last slide on this presentation is the um, um, HP Software's um, operations. So this is um, basically the same stuff that we built for Telia Sonera, but it's not based on analytics of speech. It's, uh, it's on, on all the data that comes in to HP Software's um, uh, application for, for, for uh, operations management. So everything that feeds into the operations management we can analyze and say that, okay, you have a problem in these and these services, maybe you should talk to this person. So um, I haven't seen any deployments yet in Sweden but, uh, or in the Nordics, but I'm hoping that, that we will have our first customer before end of year. So guys, um, basically, this is the presentation. I hope that you understand what we can do. Uh, I took some examples from, from my real life, uh, and that was, remember, the speech analytics, video analytics. Um, of course, um, if, if you do something with regards to uh, anything that produces data and you want to mine it, we probably have the platform to kind of extract the information as you want to see it. Also, for me personally, the enterprise search stuff is really, really good. I'm re very much hoping that we will deploy it ourselves, for ourselves, so I can actually ask my system for exactly the information I need in the way that I want to ask them uh, and find relevant information and feed it back. Um, any questions so far? Do you see any competitors for your solution? Yes, we do. Um, the biggest competitor, I would say, would be IBM. Uh, did you, have you heard about Watson? Mm. So Watson is this uh, computer that beat um, uh, the best human players in Jeopardy. Um, the thing with Watson is that, for, uh, well, number one, they, they actually license idle technology to that. So it's our, our uh, technology in, in there. And uh, they haven't, it's very good on big projects like a, uh, nationwide healthcare systems, but I haven't seen any deployments on a smaller solution, for example, like speech or facial recognition and so forth. But um, yeah. What about uh, this classical uh, data analysis, uh, like SIS? Yeah, um, those are typically yeah. So uh, so uh, SAS. Um, basically, that's also a competitor. But then you need to have an analytics person, an individual that has this, I am an analytics specialist, and he takes orders from the business and pr pr produces documents or, um, or uh, analysis and response. And uh, yeah, that's, that's also a competitor. With this idle thing, you don't have to be a specialist. You actually uh, communicate with the system as you want to do it. So instead of me putting out a request to have an analytics to some person, you can do it yourself by just asking that. Uh, for example, we have Salesforce. We use that uh, as a CRM system. Uh, I have a beta uh, Salesforce system using uh, IDOL. So if I want to go to Vodafone and I want to know what cases do we have with Vodafone, I just type in Vodafone, what cases do we have? And it, it produces to me 
yeah, these are the opportunities. Uh, these are the persons involved. And, and uh, yeah, meetings are booked this and this and these dates. So I don't have to be a specialist. I just ask it like this. If I would want to have this information in the old salesforce.com, I mean, probably what, what you are using, this would take 40 minutes for me to find out. So I cut out 40 minutes just by, you know, typing the stuff that I want to do with. So you see that uh, your solution is, is replacing the uh, SIS and then I would say so, yes. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, it's easy. Um, it's like times before Google was, right? You know, before Google, you have to ask persons, you have to go and search yourself, you have to go to maybe a library or whatever. Today, everybody just go Google. If I get a support request for data protector and a problem, I don't even call support, I just go to Google. And I see, and I'm probably gonna get the four, fourth hit. That's gonna be exactly what I'm looking for. This is the same disruptive technology, but for basically everything. So everybody gonna buy one of these? <laughs> Perfect. Can you show us the demo, maybe? Um, did you see the initial, the, the CCTV uh, stuff that was, yeah, I can show. So, the application that was built, sorry for my slow computer. I think this was the, um, this was the way uh, this was footage, uh, how you teach the system. Uh, this is all going to the image, uh, CCTV um, uh, imagery, where you define areas that you don't have to care about. Uh, and then you, then you put in vectors. You will see it soon. I think that he, he will produce an a, a object, and he will say that if an uh, if a object moves this fast, kind of, uh, it, it's okay. If it moves anything different from this, you should alert. Now this is one application, right? You can do this for basically whatever you choose to analyze. This is quite nice to show because it's visual. That's, that's quite, quite, quite compelling. the most beautiful demo, but, but it kind of shows you how, how the system works. No more questions? Well, you have to learn. You have to learn. Remember, the, it, it, it's never 100% accurate. So you have to have a, you can, like a trim, you have to trim it in. Uh, and and you, depending on what application you use it, it's, uh, I think that, um, for example, the language stuff, it's 80% accurate. So, but it's, it can be very uh, problematic if you get 20% wrong, right? You can say, instead of saying mother, you say pig. And it can be very, very bad, right? So you have to have uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, analyzing the results of the idol or the, of, the, of the Haven platform. And then when you, are, say, when you have trimmed it enough, you can say, okay, now I'm sufficient that this is okay. Now we can deploy it. It will still not be 100% accurate. Well, if 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 the deviation is very strong, you have to you have to have an, a trigger saying that you know what I'm pretty unsure about these uh, five cases. We need to have a manual somebody look at it manually. But you can automate 90 90 percent quite easily of this stuff. It's quite good enough. Okay, guys, thank you for this. Remember.